why we wear hats. <laughs> oh, hi. This week, we are finally starting our earth bag solar shed thing. This week, we are finally starting the first course on our solar shed. Wake up slowly Still and softly Let the moon tall and still To break of day All you Feeble, easy When you see the stuff you swore Wait for the morning flood This was our first time laying earth bags. So we are going to show you things that we should not have done, mm. things that we did right, mm. and things that, what else was it? <laughs> <laughs> so we are here to tell you things that we did right and things we did not do right. <laughs> There's a few of those for sure. <laughs> All right, let's, what do we start with? How important it is to have an order and a system. It helps that we have six people. It's true. Let me tell you, everybody kind of has their job, although they still fight over those jobs. But everybody kind of figured out like each piece of the puzzle, which was really cool. And trust me, if we only had the two of us, it would have taken a lot longer, yeah. I think. Yeah. For sure. We finally got all the Rebel Trench stuff leveled out. We finally got all of our prep work done. So now we get to start laying the bags. Our first course of the Solar Shed Earth Bag Build starts now. This video is not sponsored by AHA, even though it is the bubbly drink that quenches our thirst while we play in the dirt. Let's talk about our process because we said everybody had their own job. So here's what we figured out. First of all, you have to sift the dirt before you put it in the bag, right? right. That gets out all the big rocks. So I made a sifter that will sit on our gorilla cart. It's just quarter inch screen sandwiched between some two by fours. Yeah. And the cool thing is, is the kids can come out and do that 
during the day, during the week, when we're not actually working on that. That way we have a big pile of sifted dirt that's already ready to go. Having two carts has been a time saver. We have a Gorilla cart that's like seven cubic feet, but we also have a wheelbarrow. Yeah, so we put the sifted dirt into that Gorilla cart because again, we built the thing, so you just put it on there and then it's already in the cart. <laughs> so when you sift it, it's already in the cart, right? Then you just bring that over and then we have the cement mixer. So let's talk about that. So the cement mixer, we're able to just put the sifted dirt directly into there. We have a, a ratio of <laughs> cement and our local dirt that we're using. Yep. And we're able to use our long hose that's close to our water tank. Usually there's two kids that man that and they've gotten really good at figuring out the ratio and kind of getting it at the right consistency, which is pretty fun. Um, and then when we're done with that, we flip it over to the other side and we've got a wheelbarrow on that side and we just dump it into that. Yep. And then what? Then we bring the wheelbarrow over to where we're putting the dirt into the bag. So we are still working on our dolly slash cart, but we did already build the bucket part of it. And so technically we're still kind of below ground and the dolly doesn't really fit, but we are using the actual bucket, which is two five gallon buckets that we kind of cut and we put together so that we can, we can scrunch up that bag on the bottom of it and then tighten it up with some elastic. And then that way it makes it really easy when you have somebody who holds that the bucket and you have other people who are dumping the dirt in there and then you can just kind of shake it and get it filled in yeah once it gets heavy enough the bag will drop it starts to release yeah, yeah it starts to release itself from the elastic so it's a pretty good system like mm -hmm. once we really got going we went pretty fast i think the hardest part is getting that consistency right mm -hmm. and making sure that's not too wet because we we did one that was like way too wet and it kind of messed us up because we couldn't get it tamped down and then some of them were too dry and then it was coming out the holes in the bag. So I think we've got it figured out now. <laughs> yeah. We ended up with two kids manning the cement mixer. Yep. One person holding the bucket, two people filling the bucket, and one person watching the dog. Because he is into everything. Everything. And if he's not with us all the time, he just is like there and like we don't want him eating cement and like getting into, there's so many little things he could really get hurt on. Yeah. And we tried putting him in the paddock, but he was too sad. He just, he just moaned and howled and barked and the he, whole time. He needs to be with us. He is but very But he did really needy. good today. He did good today because he was tired. Yeah. And I think he was just sad because we weren't playing with him yet. <laughs> But usually there's one person keeping an eye on the dog just to make sure that he doesn't get into anything. Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about what we did wrong. Let's first. talk about wrong. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing we did wrong was we did the circle, the dome part first. That we did that as a single course and then the rectangle. And so the the circle, we did not tamp it until we were completely done with the circle. Big mistake. That was a problem because it had gotten too dry by that point. And then as we were trying to tamp it down, it just it wasn't it wasn't squishing out to the sides and it cracked and like it just it didn't work very well. So we learned that you really kind of have to tamp as you go. At least with these kind of bags. Right, with these types of bags. Yeah, you want to you want to tamp as you go because you want to do that when it still has that moisture in it so that it really solidifies and gets really hard. What did we try? We tried to use a bungee around the bucket the first time. Oh yeah. And Don't use a bungee <laughs> with hooks. Even with plastic hooks, it got caught in the little mesh bag and totally ripped a huge hole. Yeah, so we had to like stop that bag and start another <laughs> one. It was yeah. frustrating. Yeah, it was. But we've used a, a single elastic band, like an exercise band, mm -hmm. and that has worked amazingly. Yeah, it was, it was a good size. We tied it off and, and it really it releases that kind of just at the right time. This is bad. This is good. Bad, good, bad, good. So what did we do right? 
we got the mixture right mm -hmm. because the kids are awesome. Well, we got the whole bucket bag system right once we got that elastic band on there it really made the delivery and like filling of the bags and getting them all centered and like it actually worked really really well and setting up the system where there's the sifted dirt then the cement mixer right next to the cement mm -hmm. pile yeah has been a lifesaver yeah the cement mixer has been awesome because the kids are able to fill it on one side and then they flip it over and then we fill the wheelbarrow on the other side and we have kind of a good system going. That is it. We got the first course done. This is awesome because we have a system in place. The kids all know how to do it. We know how to do it. And even though we have like what, 20, 30 more courses to go, that's okay because now we kind of know what we're doing. We feel comfortable, well, sort of comfortable with it. Until we get to the hard parts of windows and doors. And, and when we're really high up. And yeah. All There's still lots to figure out. Don't worry, we're not going to make a video for every course. But as we get to each sort of important part, we are going to talk about that. So, we got a bunch of people that keep saying, you know, how can we support you? How can we help you guys keep making more videos and not die in the desert? As my friend Nate said. And so I finally put together a page on our website. It's at tinyshinyhome.com slash support. And it just kind of talks about the different ways that we make little bits of money off of Tiny Shiny Home. I'm not going to bore you with all those here. You can go read it and check it out. But there's lots of nice little ways that you can do that. You guys can help us out. If you want to, totally cool. We really appreciate it. Otherwise, we hope you're subscribed. You've hit the notification bell. You've signed up for our email. All that fun stuff. And we'll see you next time.